and welcome to the LEC post game lobby. I'm Quickshot, joined by Vedius, and for the first time in 384 days, a player from the victorious team is joining us on set in studio. Upset. Congratulations. Before we get into any of the games, what's it like being back in the studio? What's it like being back on stage? Wait, what's it like having a monitor that's not seven miles away from you anymore? <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, when I heard that playoffs is going to be on stage, I started moving my monitor like one inch closer to me every day. Because <laughs> when we were here for like a media day or something, I, I checked the distance and I realized it's like, like a good this margin off. So... I had to change it every day when I knew it playoffs going to be on stage. And Ladies, I made the adjustment just in and time. Everybody else watching at home, this is what pro players do. You measure the distance. You have to recreate the exact scenario. Well, why do you play with the monitor that far away? I wanted to get a new perspective. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Well, listen, I did not need uh, to have as much of a heart attack today as I think, uh, you know, you put on a show. Aggression, aggression, aggression. Combined kills per minute. Today's series was at 0 0.95. So that's just under one kill per minute on average across all the games. Summer last year, it was 0.89. So, you know, more than six percentage points up. What was it like playing? And was this what you were anticipating from today's series? I mean, to be honest, the games felt really slow <laughs> to our usual games. <laughs> I was actually thinking we played so passive and slow and I, I, I didn't mind. Like I actually had time to farm and not run around the map looking to kill people. So I liked it. But yeah, it was not as many kills as I'm used to from scrims or the, even the other official games, right? So I guess on stage we play a bit slower. Unbelievable. I've got a couple of questions <laughs> here. <laughs> I absolutely want to ask you to talk talk me through some of these plays. Obviously, this is the level one from game four. We're going to focus on game four for now. But, you know, coming straight out the gate, it felt to me like you guys had a lot of level ones planned. This was the one that was the most successful. Is that fair to say? No, we, we didn't really plan it. It was just that last game, they went as three. I think one game, we went as three to get our solo lane extra XP. And then we checked the replay in, of game three after we played the game and they actually went bot S3. So I called in the game that if they go there, come with us Karma. Karma is really strong level one and we're going to fist fight them no matter what. And it was a fist fight and <laughs> we won. <laughs> <laughs> Last game, upset. The fans at home just watched your hero defense of the Nexus where you were able to jump in, pick up a kill onto Treats, and then push SK out of the base. Mm -hmm. How nervous were you that this was going to Game 5? Well, I didn't think about that at all. I was pretty in the moment, I would say. I was definitely sweating a bit, because 2v5 is usually pretty hard. And we just, like, we had a really good situation in the game, but we went for engage. It didn't quite pan out. And uh, yeah, I was sweating a bit, but it was it was OK. I, I, felt me and, I felt quite confident that me and Niski can defend one wave at least. So, Law asked this question to Bupa earlier, and he talked about how sometimes you're not on the same page when it comes to- What was the question? Yeah, hang on, I'm getting to it. Uh, sometimes when it comes to aggression, you guys are on the same page when it comes to the initial part, but then afterwards sometimes either the communication breaks down or it doesn't kind of work out. But something that I have noticed in almost every single one of your games is you could have an extremely clean game up until a point where you will do a dive, you'll go for a fight, and something will just be like, why did they do that? Mm -hmm. So, can you talk me through from your perspective? No, I wonder the same thing. <laughs> 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 but, I mean, it's like, I think we might lack some patience sometimes. Okay. Uh, I can and, tell you that for sure. And we really <laughs> do enjoy fighting and going for fights because that's part of the game and we are good at it, but I think it's just a lack of patience sometimes. And on also, like we said, I guess, like we see good engages, but then we want to keep fighting and prolong the fight. So that's something we really have to look at. And we did it today a little bit better, but still some growing pains, I would say, but yeah. Because, so from my perspective, I'm like, okay, so you can get away with it where teams, where I think that pound for pound, you just have better talent. However, when you go up against like, I would say mad, Rogue G2, these teams, like, I don't think that you can just individually skill check them, right? Like, you will not just beat them on an individual level in every single game. And so that's where things like macro become a lot more important. And that's where I struggle to see you break into the top three because that's something that those three teams have that I think Fnatic doesn't. So I'd love if you could tell me that I'm an idiot and I'm wrong, but that's right now where my concerns exist for Fnatic. No, I don't think our macros like much worse than these teams. I mean, I think G2 has really good macro, but 
I don't think Matt and Roke have like particularly better macro than us. Okay. I think our biggest problem is overextending ourselves and looking for too much all the time. Uh, and it might look like bad macro, but I think it's just like bad individual decisions to keep going for a fight. So I don't feel like we will have problem getting out macro. I feel like we are our own biggest enemy in most games that we lose, where we just have to f go for some stuff that is not that wise in hindsight. <laughs> and if we realize, if we can see that it wasn't wise before we do it, then I think we are in a very good spot. Well, I do have some good news. Um, we will have a lot of time to talk, as long as you're willing to keep us entertained. The good news, Mr. Upset, is you're the key up player of the series. Uh, voters at home, 62% of you. And as you were walking up to set, Vedius looked over and said, how's your back feeling, um, Upset? Because I think from our perspective, and something we talked about backstage, was talking about how the playoff series and the different teams you've appeared on over the last couple of years, today was a statement. The consistency, the ability to defend the Nexus under like the highest pressure, every single lane, the, the bot diff was just huge. So congratulations. And how do you feel about your personal performance today, especially in contrast to previous playoff series? Uh, I think I played pretty similar to other playoff series. From my perspective, it might sound weird, but I'm just really grateful for my teammates, especially Buipo. He allowed me to be the carry today and he was, especially games three and four, just tanking so much pressure and still being really useful and making good calls. And I mean, I'm so grateful for Hillesang too. I think he really is unleashing me and you can see it in the CSD and the kills early game. I always thought I was capable of this, but with Silesang, he taught me so much and he's doing such a great job enabling me. So it's not that I played a lot better. I just think uh, I got a lot of help from my team. Yeah, and not to play the style almost you want to, right? Yeah, and also my mid jungle played a lot more control today and I really liked it. Oscar had some really great early games and Niski's Oriana in game one was Crazy. Fantastic as Absolutely well. Crazy. So well, yeah. listen, hold that thought for a moment because I do want to come back and talk about the bot lane in particular. Before we do, though, we do have a special treat as Treats has uh, elected to join us for an interview with Law. Special treat as treats indeed. Thank you for joining me. It, it came so close today, and I mean, it was your very first best of five on stage as a team. So. Uh, first off, congrats for making Fnatic sweat so much. And is there anything you will keep from this series that will help you perform better in summer and beat them? Yeah, I mean, the series was really close for sure. It, it felt like we could have won all the games. Uh, they, they played really well to close out a lot of games. Uh, it felt like they had deserved the win, you know. But yeah, it feels really bittersweet to lose in this fashion. And I think the biggest thing I'll remember is just how we like evolved as a team throughout the playoffs. Like our last five series in regular season were just horrific. And in two weeks, we managed to step it up a lot and actually bring a fight to Fnatic. So for that, I'm, I'm really proud of my team for. You have every reason to be proud of, I mean, SK has an amazing season. And uh, again, you had four rookies in this team led by Genax. So tell me about working together, riding this momentum and uh, gaining this success in playoff. Yeah, I mean, with a lot of rookies, you just have to look for the long-term progression, right? We knew that spring would obviously be harder than summer because we haven't played together. A lot of teams have at least like two, three members uh, from the previous season, but we only had one. So we wanted to just build like as fast as we could and as like good as we could. And obviously we didn't quite make it there and uh, go f as far as we wanted in playoffs. But I think uh, we have a really solid foundation now for summer and that's what we're looking forward to. You know what, I had an interview earlier this week and uh, Tom, the journalist, asked me, what do you think makes SK so good? I mean, this group of rookies just clicking together. So actually, I'm going to ask you, why do you think you guys are so good together? I mean, I think when you have a lot of rookies, you have a lot of bloodthirstiness in general. You want to take a lot of fights. And as you can see in this series as well against Fnatic, we take a lot of fights. They're not always the best. We don't always play mechanically best, right? But we're like willing to go forward and willing to win the game, which I think a lot of older teams or like older players in general don't feel like that. So I think that's something that we're proud of, you know, like being able to go in together and commit to calls. Uh, and that's something we'll keep for summer as well and we'll improve faster on it. C coming back to Fnatic and also what Bipo told me earlier, he said that this small moments made the difference. How did you feel these small moments? And uh, I mean, if you had to redo some stuff maybe, what would it be? I mean, in general, yeah, the small moments really made the series, I think. Uh, we could have ended like the last game as well, for example, if we played slightly better. And also like the level ones, we, we just played them like shit, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> me and Jesu, we, we really trolled the level one, one game and then the other one was a big fight. So I think like these small things as well as some like random picks where they get dragons and stuff really made the series. So from that perspective, it's like it's it's hard to say like what really went wrong. You know, it's just like small things. I think it comes slightly from experience and like slightly from them just having a slight edge in this. You know, like playoff experience. But I yeah, I agree with Bipo. It was uh, for sure a close one. Yeah, and, and it's about what you will gain from this series and how you will translate it to success in summer. But um, that's a story for another day, another month maybe. But I mean, treats. Just seeing you here on stage today, I'm so happy. You tweeted this morning that it's been one and a half year since you played on stage. So from the NA studio to here, how does it feel to be back? Yeah, I mean, it feels really good to be in the studio. Even without an audience, there's something about playing on stage. It just feels like more alive. And you're like close to your teammates, you're looking at your teammates, you can see the enemy team, right? Even the casters, you can see their reactions. So it's just way more hype and I'm really happy to be back. And I think even though we lost today, like I'm sure we all like appreciate the experience of playing on stage. And if we wouldn't have made playoffs, it would have been really depressing. So yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy we made it here at least. Well, I'm glad you had this positive experience at least. And Tritz, thank you so much for agreeing for this interview. And thank you. enjoy your break. It's been a while since you had one, so. yeah. yeah. Husband, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, thank you so much again. Thank you. I'll see you in summer. And back to you, Trev. Thank you so much, Law. Thank you so much, Treats. Uh, it's very difficult to do a loser's interview on stage, especially under the circumstances. But congratulations on qualifying for the summer season. So we'll see you in a few weeks' time. I'm going to turn my attention back to Upset. And Upset, I'm going to ask you to look at the screen and talk me through some of these bot lane engages from your perspective. Because we on the broadcast were talking so much about the bot diff. But how was it playing? And you've already spoken very highly of Hillisang and how you two work together. Well, we knew here it was a 2v2 and we have seen this situation many times before. And we just felt really strong and uh, yeah, they just got kind of murdered. <laughs> and their wave was bad, so either they tried to contest or they, it's going to be a very tough spot. So yeah, this one, the Leona just sadly griefed it really hard. <laughs> Started E and E'd into us when we were stronger. Uh, I mean, Kai's is just super strong early game with Hail of Blades and the Q is kind of low cooldown compared to most other spells. So, yeah, just took some good fights, played them well and worked out well for us. I thought that um, Kai's would be a lot weaker on this patch, but it seems that teams, at least in this series, I'll say for this series for now because I don't know what other teams are prioritizing, but it was surprising to me how high on the priority table she was still. Was that only just because Tristana was banned off, or was, did you feel like it was just something you wanted to take away from Jezu? Uh, I think this champ is still good. I don't think it's like the best AD like it was maybe four patches ago, but yeah, I think it's just really strong champ and it's also probably my favorite champ. So if it's open, I can pick it and look pretty pretty good stuff. Talking, talking about looking pretty good, um, you were asking what your CSD was and you know how things looked throughout the series. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that during the regular season, your CSD was 11.7. This series, 25. Goal difference during the regular season, plus 330. This series, plus 1.1K. Now that <laughs> nearly doubled, okay? Because at the end of game three, it was plus 16 and 800. And that then jumped to 25 <laughs> and 11. That is gigantic, but obviously multiple kills at you know very low levels. Uh, it works out in your favor. Look, this means that Fnatic will move on to the next round. SK are eliminated from the spring playoffs. Potential round two opponents, when we start looking at this bracket, it will be the lowest seed from round one. And expectations are most likely Schalke, right? If you assume G2 win tomorrow. Um, upset when you look at well, the rest. Just one sec. Do you believe that G2 will win tomorrow? Yes. Right then, under his own assumption, you would play Schalke first. And the craziest thing about next week is you would have to play Schalke, and then the loser of Rogue. Mad Lions. Uh, mm -hmm. Mad Lions. So you have to play two best of fives within a single weekend. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you've been in this position before with Origin, right? This yeah, we we played Rogue and then G2. We won versus Rogue, and then we had to play G2 one day or two days after, I think. Yes. So. Yeah, I don't mind, but this time it feels a lot different because in Origin I felt like we were maybe a bit more capped and if we were to play against the G2, even though from my perspective the series was close, I always felt like they had a little bit more experience and were just a little bit better in the important moments. But this time the feeling is more that we are our own worst enemy and if we can really get together as a team and see when it's too much and really 
play a bit more controlled maybe and take the right situations. I feel like we can win with anyone, but it's still a tough task to play two best of fives, of course. But I feel quite confident that I feel like more, it's more up to us this time. And yep. if we can overcome our problems, I don't feel like we are outmatched in a role or something at all. I really like the way you framed that. And I, I had this thought backstage. What is the approach to this play style? And like one of the ways I look at it, if you're able to play proactively, aggressively, create these scenarios, and then you learn to control it, that's always going to be, in theory, a stronger team than a team that cannot be proactive, mm -hmm. right? It's easier to slow yourself down than it is to speed yourself up. Well, maybe for some. <laughs> 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 but I asked Vedius this question, and I'm going to ask you now, Upset. Does your motto cannon kind of encourage this. And the reason I ask is when I think back to Yamato coaching Vitality along with Jazuke and Attila and, and thinking about that play style of, of when they went to Worlds, it was all about in your face. It was create the opportunities. So is this something that as a team, as an organization, you actively pursue and, and you know actively lean into? I think it's just our natural side. I think Yamato sees that we can create leads as a great asset of our team. But he is definitely trying to make us play more consistent and try to make it more controlled. Once we have the lead, just take it home. You don't need to keep fighting till the game is a complete bloodbath. So he definitely appreciates this part of our player's uh, skill set. But he is also, especially right now, trying to push us more into the more consistent way. Yeah. Because in a best of five, the team that is consistently better most of the time will win the game. And it's not too much about trying to create a, get a crazy early game lead, but then you don't know how to play the game, you just fight and hope it works every time. Then it depends a lot on skill difference instead of team difference. Yeah. And the better team is usually the team that wins the best of five. I mean, that's what Vedas was saying a little bit earlier. Look, I've got enough time for just one more question. And I want to ask Upset, what does success look like for you this playoffs? Well, success is always winning the split. I'm not saying we are right now in the greatest spot or that people should expect it, but no matter, I went to finals or like made it deep multiple times. And if you lose, you don't feel like you succeeded. So if you don't win, then it's not really a success for me. You're going to pick up the title. That's it. Upset, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on the series today. It was a hell of a show. I really, really appreciated it. That's it. Tomorrow, we will see our reigning champions in action as they take on Schalke Null Fear in our second series. Um, I'm just going to say goodbye for now. The tradition of the selfie will no longer continue because we don't have somebody on the big screen. We have someone here socially distanced, keeping safe. That was our first day. Thank you so much to everyone coming and watching. It's exciting to have the players back in studio. We'll be back tomorrow for more League of Legends on the LEC stage. We'll see you then. Bye! Welcome back to Berlin, Germany. It has been 384 days since we last saw the players in this studio. But today, they return to the home of the LEC. I don't think Upset and Hilly Science play so much together. So me and Upset think very like each other. No. This is only a strength and it cannot be weakness in my opinion. Well, it's gonna be like this. Either my partner gonna go 20-0 or they're gonna go 0-20. There will be no in-between. Fondo, Hillisang has to pull away. Hillisang getting burned down. They're gonna get one. Upset's gonna look to respond. Jezu now gonna be in trouble. Patrice. Gonna go back in. That's gonna be the knockback. Tree's now gonna be in trouble. Upset looking to finish the job. Good damage coming in. First blood. This is kind of dangerous. Get caught out. Hillisang immediately to chain CC. No chance to even proc. Even though he's in the middle of the enemy team, the follow up is there. Tree's getting knocked out and already 40 seconds into the game. But Genex, maybe he can turn it back to flash away from Hillisang. Genex trying to finish the job. But Genex, will he go down as well? It looks like it. It's getting lower. Where's the Baron? We'll steal at the hex flash over the wall. Genex, they're going in. They're jumping down. Can they finish the Baron? They get it just barely. But now, as Want to take the fight, it's blew up to the side. Keep your eyes on that charm. Gen X doing good damage for the follow up. Oh, 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 Nesky, that's a hero play. Fnatic taking the Baron, they've taken the fight, they've turned the game back in their favor. Gen X is a clean play, they cannot body block the shotgun. Gen X, it's just Gen X, are you kidding me? It's on the side as well. Fnatic are in SK's base. Gen X, what can he do? Hits him with just the edge of the ultimate. Genex now on a rampage. In comes the Genex to flash forward. Genex, this is his moment. He finds it. That's a double kill. SK have turned the fight.
Gen X is playing out of his mind in this playoff game. The knockback is flawless. Good mechanics coming in. Gen X doesn't look like he can survive that one. Dunked down the heart to finish the job. First blood for Fnatic. Side the is just about to flash. With five seconds oh, on Drake. Upset. upset going in. Oh, goes no. in. SK will not hold on. Their dreams are crushed. They fall flat in the face of Fnatic. And Fnatic are here for LEC playoffs. Well, the ah, it was a little off. It was a little off. Uh,